Hey there clients, Coach One Nature here and welcome to another special video. This is a video I promised I'd do a wee while ago and it involves IGN of all people. They always seem to love to get on my radar, don't they? But a wee while ago, one of the client one of one of you, one of the client members, sent me a tweet asking about IGN's top one hundred RPGs of all time. Uh, I didn't pay too much attention to it because I don't really care what IGN says. I don't watch their reviews. I only follow them and keep up with the latest news because they do have they do get exclusivity from all those blowjobs they give to EA and all those publishers and all that out there. Uh, but I don't trust their opinion. Not I've never trusted their opinion. Ever since their review of ODST and even a wee one or two before that. However, I had to check out the top 100 when someone stated to me that Dragon Age is not in the top 100 at all. And by the way, I have checked, and just to help you out, I actually went to the website and wrote down all 100 RPGs in a Word document. And I'm going to, if I can, I'll paste every single one of them into the description down below. You can check it out for yourself. Dragon Age is not on that list. Now... Here is, I've got three major problems with this list as a whole, but let me just state this in my, let me just clear the air first. Everyone's opinion on what is the greatest RPG of all time is going to be different. There's no if, buts, or what's about it. What I consider to be the greatest RPG of all time, someone else may not consider to be the greatest RPG of all time. And it's, I think it's safe to say that very few people have played over a hundred RPGs. I haven't, but I'm pretty sure a few others have. Firstly, another thing I want to state is, this is IGN, not an individual. This is, well, the list looks like it's made by an individual, but IGN are meant to represent the gamers. They haven't for years, but that's beside the point. And this list does not scream representing the gamers. The main problem I have is their top 12 and the positioning of some of their games. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about the entire list as a whole, as I say, as you can voice your own opinions in the comment section down below with the position in the description, which has all 100, hopefully, if the YouTube let me put it in. Or if I can, I'll leave it as a word docu uh, document, a note on my Facebook page, you can check it out. Okay, right, so everyone's opinion is going to be different. That's, I, I, I respect people's opinions. Someone who states that, let's just say, Final Fantasy VII, which I'm playing at the moment, as the greatest RPG of all time. If they can give me a legit reason why it's the greatest RPG of all time, I'll be like, I don't agree with you, but I respect your opinion. I don't respect IDN's opinion because they're a bunch of money-grabbing whores who love to blow publishers up the ass and lick the shit off of their toilets. But, uh, of course, that's just them. Because they're asses. Now, you can make your opinion of parent on all 100 but the ones I'm going to be talking about primarily are the top 12 because these are the ones that kind of infuriated me the most. Firstly I want to say also, I'm not, I've got three main problems as I said. With the list as a whole is one of the first problems. I've got to say the last one to the end. The first major problem I have with the list of whole as a whole. Okay firstly let me just say this. If I was doing this list, if I would played every RPG out there and I was doing this list, here's how I would do this list. One, there would be three step. Sorry, there would be three stipulations to make to make on the list. First one, customize the three C's basically. Customization. You have to be able to customize your main character to a certain extent, i.e., either a whole new character, customizing their equipment, customizing their name, customizing the character as a whole, and that is us. Two, customization is number one. Second C, choice. The story in the game must give you ample choice. You must be able to make a difference in the universe that you're set in, and it can be in a linear. Linear is dependable on the story, but mon must what uh, must be must as please let us have choice. That's for an RP. That's the whole point of an RPG, in my opinion, is role playing. You're meant to role play and make choices. And some of the games on this list, you make no choice. And finally. Characters. There must have memorable characters and characters that you will never forget or characters who you inspire are or who are influential in the RPG genre or at least are memorable to an extent. So three C's. Customize, choice, character. That is the three C's for me in my opinion for RPGs. On this list there are quite a lot of JRPGs. I actually had to quite look through the list again. There are a lot of JRPGs, which is debatable, like, JRPGs, the ones I've played anyway, have had linear stories where you make very little choice. 
beyond certain how your character talks to a person, there's very little choice. But I will state this, Final Fantasy VII is an exception. You do actually make some nice dialogue choices in that. I do like that, so there is, it kind of does that for me. Customization for uh, JRPGs, of course, there's customization with the equipment and all that. That's okay. As is, JRPGs for me never really classified themselves as my kind of RPGs. But if someone can, someone has told me why JRPGs should be on this list, and I'm like, okay, I can see why. However, as I say, is one of the main problems with JRPGs for me is linear stories. There's a lot of linear stories in the JRPGs I've played, and I don't like that about games. But that's as I say, JRPGs are fine. But there were way too many on this list. There were a fuck ton of JRPGs, which. You can argue a lot of them deserve to be on there, which, like, final, certain Final Fantasy games I'm okay, like, d fuck, they deserve to be there. Um, a couple other ones, as I say, I don't play a lot of JRPGs, but as I say, I can understand why they're on there. So that's a, that's a problem I have. Now, the other two I'm going to get fucking pissed off at, because I am infuriated by this. And it's the positions of the top 12. Let me read out the top 12 for you. Because I think you really need to hear this. Number 12, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. I would put it higher, but that's just my opinion. Number 11, Speak of the Devil, Final Fantasy VII. As it is, I'm playing at the new, I can't make my opinion on it. Number 10, Fallout 3. Would put it higher, but understandable. 9, Mass Effect. Would put it way fucking higher than 9. And guess what beat Mass Effect? Number 8, World of fucking Warcraft. Who cares about the story in Warcraft? Who? You care about it, you let me know. 7. Skyrim. Okay, it would be higher than Mass Effect, I understand that. 2. Sorry, 7. 6. Diablo 2. Never played it, can't say anything on it. 5. Final Fantasy 4. Never played it, can't say anything on it. Okay, this one's an absolute fucking laugh. Number 4. Pokemon Red and Blue. That's right, Pokemon be Skyrim, Mass Effect, Knights of the Old Republic, Final Fantasy VII, and Fallout 3. I'll get to that in a minute. 3, Baldur's Gate 2, Shadows of Am. 2, Chrono Trigger, never played it. 1, Final Fantasy VI. I haven't played Final Fantasy VI, I intend to play it, I watched an entire playthrough of Final Fantasy VI, and I do agree that it is a very good story, but fuck's sake, I've got... Let me show you. I got the bloody fucking soundtrack right here. Final Fantasy VI. I bought it. Because guess what? It's a fucking good soundtrack. But do you see the problem with that top 12? Some of the positions I can understand. It comes down to opinion. But this list was obviously made by someone who's a JRPG fucking whore. I'm sorry. There are way too many JRPGs in that fucking top 12. For fuck's sake. Final Fantasy VII, I can understand why that would be in the top 10 for some people. It is a really good game from what I've played. As I said, I'm not that far into it. I can't make my opinion on it. World of Warcraft should not be in the fucking top 10 because it's an MMO RPG. And I hate to be the bearer of fucking bad news. I personally haven't played it, so I can't make my opinion on it. But who the fuck cares about the story in fucking World of Warcraft? Who? Who cares about it? Okay, something probably does, but that's beside the point. Skyrim definitely should be in the top 10 because it's not a fucking fantastic game. Should it be number 7? No. Diablo 2, haven't played it, can't say anything. Final Fantasy 4, not played it. The thing, the nail in the coffin for me is Pokemon Red and Blue. Well done IGN, you fucking, what, are you blowing fucking Nintendo now? Are you getting on your knees and blowing Nintendo saying, give us your cream filled goodness. Give us your water gun. Does anyone consider Pokemon one of the greatest RPGs of all time? And by the way, I have done my research. I know Pokemon technically classifies as a JR fucking PG. But guess what? I hate to be the bearer of fucking bad news. But who cares about the story in the Pokemon games? I didn't. And according to IGN... Pokemon Red and Blue has better story, character development and greater fucking music... And customization than Mass Effect, Final Fantasy VII, the Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. It has, according to fucking IGN, you know Skyrim? 
fucking piece of shit. Red and blue, Pokemon, that's where it's at. That is one of the best RPGs of all fucking time. Fuck, it beat Skyrim, it beat Warcraft, it beat Mass Effect, it beat Fallout 3, it beat Final Fantasy 7, it beat fucking Knights of the Old Republic. Let's go higher. It beat Final Fantasy Tactics, it beat Secret of Mana, it beat Dark Souls, it beat System Shock 2, it beat EverQuest, it beat fucking Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Who puts Pokemon in their top 10 RPGs of all time? No one! Well, maybe someone. I just, if you can give me a legit fucking reason, then yes. But I, I just, I try and think logically about this. Logically fucking speaking, and fucking gamer fucking speaking, who here cares about the story in Pokemon? There's only fucking two goals in Pokemon. Catch them all, and fucking beat the Elite Four. There's, and I'll defeat the big bad guys, but fuck that. You don't even fucking care about that half the fucking time. How do you put Pokemon in the top ten? I am sorry. There is no argument that you can say to me that deserves Pokemon to be in the top ten. Acceptably. Pokemon was an influential game at the time. At the time. It hasn't changed. It's been the same fucking game every goddamn year. But guess what? It's not... Does anyone ever... How? Okay, here's the thing. The most difficult decision you ever make in Pokemon is which Pokemon do you start off with? Do you start off with Bulbasaur, Red and Blue specifically? Red, do you start with Bulbasaur, Charmander or Squirtle? That's the only fucking choice you ever make in that game. Don't even fucking say oh but the choice of catching certain Pokemon. You can catch all of them, that's the main fucking goal. The most, as it, the most difficult choice, what Pokemon do you start off with? That is the only choice you ever make in that game. Nothing more, nothing. Do you, can you decide, you know what, fuck it, I want to join Team Rocket. You know what, fuck it, I want to kill everyone. No, you make no choices. The only goal you've got is get all the fucking badges, catch all the Pokemon, beat the Elite Four, stop the big bad, big bad, bad guys. And that's it. That is the only goal of Pokemon Red and Blue. I know, I fucking played them. How do you, can anyone justify that? Can anyone in their right frame of mind justify why Pokemon Red and Blue is a greater RPG than Mass Effect, than fucking El Skyrim, than KOTOR, than Final Fantasy VII, than fucking Dragon Age? Dragon Age isn't even on this list. That's my last point. Dragon Age isn't on this list. But instead, they put Pokemon? How do you do this? IGN, don't care if you're watching this, but fuck you! Just fuck you with a rusty fucking trident that's been dipped in the feces of a million goats, pissed on by every fucking gamer in the world, shoved up your ass, coming out your fucking eyeballs, and then gone right up there. How do... That is an insult to gamers, to RPG, to people who call themselves RPG gamers. Now, as it is, everyone's RPG list, top 10, top 100, top whatever, it will be different. But I can't think of anyone that would put Pokemon Red and Blue in their top 10. I, I know it classifies as a JRPG, but come on. It's got better story than fucking Skyrim. Admittedly, Skyrim doesn't have that great of a story. It does to an extent. It's better than fucking... It has a better story than Dragon Age. Oh, fuck. You know what? You know that story about the Dark Spawn and all that? Oh, fuck that. We've got a story about a ten-year-old boy gonna go and catch poker, catch little monsters and tiny-ass little balls and try and be the best there ever was. Characters. It has better characters than Dragon Age. Yeah, yeah, you know, he's Severin, Liliana, Isabella, uh, fucking Meryl, Fenris, Anders, Valenia. You know, all those characters you loved and adored? Fuck me, get them out of the way. Let's get Brock, let's get Jesse, let's get James, let's get fucking all of the gym leaders, let's get the Elite Four. They're the best characters ever. If you can't tell, I'm being fucking sarcastic. It's an insult. It's an insult, in my opinion. Who puts Pokemon there? Who in the right frame of mind puts Pokemon there? 
I don't care about the fucking story in Pokemon. I fucking... I couldn't press that fucking A button fast enough. The only thing I cared about in Pokemon was catching as many fucking Pokemon as I can, beating the Elite Four, and becoming the best there ever fucking was. That's the only thing I ever cared about. If you care about the story in fucking Pokemon, good on you. Good on you. You have the intelligence of a five-year-old. That is a that is something that I would expect my little sister to put as a top five RPG Pokemon. It's, a, it's flat out insulting to the genre of RPGs. I don't care who you are. You cannot legitimately state the Pokemon deserve to be on that list next to fucking what's it next to? I can't fucking remember. So pissed. Next to fucking Baldur's Gate two, Final Fantasy fucking. Even though I don't, I'm not the biggest fan of JRPGs, but. Fuck, I would accept any other RPG there. The Witcher, fucking Deck and Dom's RPG Adventure, fucking The Hunger Games RPG, the fucking Batman RPG, DC Universe Online, fucking Star Wars The Old Republic. I'd expect anything else to the number four slot. But Pokemon! <laughs> and the, the, the thing that slaps me in the face the most is it beats Mass Effect! Mass Effect! And also I should mention that Mass Effect 2 is like number fucking... Uh, what number is fucking Mass Effect 2? I can't even remember. I know it's like, it's very high up. Mass Effect 2 is number 57 in the list. But Mass Effect 1 is number 9. Here's another thing, IGN. Hate to be the bearer of fucking bad news, but when you fucking put an RPG on there called Mass Effect, you better include Mass Effect 2 and 3. Because I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but that's one continuous fucking story. That's another thing about the list that really pisses me off. The amount of fucking sequels that are on it. Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 should be one entry. Mass Effect 1, 2 and 3 should be one entry. Because it's a whole fucking series. Elder Scroll is debatable whether or not it should be that. Because each game is kind of on an individual level. But any kind of story that links deserves to be on the list with their sequel counterparts. But the th I'm sorry, I'm still fucking pissed off at that. Pokemon beats Mass Effect. It beats Dragon Age. I don't care who you are, where you come from, if you don't put Dragon Age in your top 10 RPGs of all time, you deserve to be slapped in the face. I don't care who you are, if you consider yourself a gamer or even an RPG gamer, you should be, if at least, played one full playthrough of Dragon Age Origins. Because guess what? It's a fucking fantastic game. It's one of the few games in this life that I would consider a piece of art. So, I... I... But Pokemon? Pokemon? Are they trying to piss us off? IGN, fuck you. I, I didn't think they could go any lower than fucking blowing EA, but they're blowing Nintendo now. It... I'm pissed. And you should be as well, because I hate to be a... But, but... I want someone to put in the comments a legit reason why Pokemon should be number fucking... What is it? Four? Give me a legit reason why Pokemon Red and Blue should be number four of the greatest RPGs of all time and be better than Mass Effect, Jade Empire, fucking Skyrim, Oblivion, uh, Final Fantasy VII, uh, Dragon Age. If you could get, if someone could give me a fucking legit reason why that deserves to be on the list there, I will give you an applause. I will eat my words because I cannot think of a legit reason. I give IGN applause for being the biggest fuck-ups of all time. I think that's all I've got to say. That's the thing that pissed me off the most. Pokemon gets in, in the list, but Dragon Age doesn't? Pokemon is better than Mass Effect? No! I'm sorry, this list is insulting to gamers. In my opinion. I'm, don't go to the site. I'm not going to link you to the site. The entire list... I give you my word is down below in the description. 
Read it and give me your opinion on it. Do a video response to this. I want to see your opinion on this. Because it pisses me off. Now, as I said, I'm not too fussed about the number one position. Number one is a debatable position. Final Fantasy VI, I have seen a full playthrough of. I have the soundtrack there. I will happily admit I am dying to play Final Fantasy VI. Because it looks like a good game. As, as it is, I watched an entire playthrough of it. The story was really good, in my opinion. Does it deserve the number one slot, in my opinion? I haven't played it. I can't give my opinion on it. But I can see why it would be. But I just don't get this. As it is, Pokemon is the biggest fucking insult, in my opinion. Don't get me wrong, I like my Pokemon games. But it's not fucking better than Mass Effect. It's not better than fucking Dragon Age. I don't care who you are. You cannot legitimately say that that fucking belongs there. That's my opinion. Don't like it? Screw you. As it is, I respect your opinion. You don't respect mine. Go fuck yourself. And IGN, here's my message to you. I hope you never, ever get the respect from anyone. Because you don't deserve it. IGN, go fuck yourselves. IGN, go and sit on a pile of broken, discarded copies of Pokemon Red and Blue that have been steeped in fucking salt and let the microchips dig into your skin, shove them up your fucking ass and eat them. And then shit them out and then eat the shit again. Eat the you love Pokemon Red and Blue? Eat the fucking cartridges. Fuck you, IGN. Fuck you. Fuck you with a fucking spiked Game Boy. That's my opinion. I'm Scottish 182, and if you excuse me, I'm gonna go and fucking punch a baby. Bye.